Was there one play that people don't think about that was really key for you guys offensively on Sunday? You know how there's always that one or two, like whether it's a conversion or an, uh, some hidden yardage y'all picked up. Yeah, I think you look at it probably, um, you know, I, everyone points I've already seen, like, you know, obviously Stafford's no looker to, to Cup is a big, huge play. Um, the fourth and in, fourth and one conversion by Coop on, on our kind of jet sweep action, you know, big play. But I thought what was a sneaky kind of big play for us down there was when Cam Akers, you know, got like six, seven yards there on one of those shotgun runs down mm -hmm. there on like a you know, second and medium. Mm -hmm. And it kind of put us in that situation where you're, you know, because a lot of people don't realize this, that 14 and in yardage range, when you're, you're first and 10 at like the 13 or the 14. The worst, that's the worst for, yeah. You know, it's like, man, for an offense, it's brutal. Yeah. There's just, there's not gaps. There's not big windows to throw it in. You know, the run game, the safeties are up tight. Like you really, that's a tough window. And so that big run he had there to kind of get us down inside that eight, seven yard line with first and 10, Really, it was like, all right, ooh, stress is off. Nobody now, Matthew doesn't have to try and fit a window he doesn't feel comfortable with to make a game winning throw on third and 10. Now you're inside that window where there's like everything's up. And that really, I thought, kind of relieved some stress there on that drive and was a huge play for us. Talk about how banged up like the quarterbacks got in that game. It was so physical. Weddle was out there playing with a busted up, you know, wing. Uh, and he he was a month off the couch. I'm like, it's incredible. But I, I'm looking at you know Stafford's entire season, and I know a lot of times now, and this is a new thing in the NFL. Like when I was here in the NFL, nobody had any agents to tell people what was wrong with you. But when when I heard what was wrong with Stafford, I actually believed it. Like because generally he's been like he's had to deal with a lot of shit through his career, and I just know like some of the hits he took against like Jacksonville and like. He was probably banged up. How banged up was he now that the season's over? Can, can you let us in on that? Like, you don't have to tell us specifically. Yeah. Was he fucked up? Well, I mean, I think you look at his career, he's had some really significant injuries in his time in Detroit. Yeah. I mean, you know, the thing about significant stuff is like, yeah, you get past them, but they're not going away. I mean, they, they still exist. So when you start getting through a season like this where, you know, you're getting hit and, and you have opportunities where we're playing in big, big games, like I always tell people, I mean, the people who think that there's not a difference and like the teams who were two and you know 14 every year yeah. and when you're 14 and two, yeah. it's a massive difference. It's when you're playing big football games every week and you're playing the, the number one team out of every every division, uh, playing big games on Monday night football and Sunday night football, there's just a whole different juice to it. And mm -hmm. it's a different kind of game. And so you, you're playing in big, big moments, a lot on the line. And uh, you're going to have moments like that where he's, he's having to fight through stuff and be tough for us. And uh, I couldn't have walked away from it being more impressed with just his level of toughness and his level of just like, who cares? I mean, he never once complains. He never tells a soul right. like he just rides like you'll get up. I, You know, it's like you stop a play. I look, I find him like, oh, man, there he is, like on the ground. You help him up. And it's like the dude like needs a rocker to get off the field. You know, right. and it's like. But he, he don't say a word. He's like, Buddy he Lee, dude. Fly. He's got Buddy Lee energy. He just throw him off a building. He's good. And, um, he does. And he just, like, walks to the sideline. He's like, oh, I'm like, dude, are you okay? He's like, oh, I should have got rid of it a little sooner. Like, yeah, it's like, yeah. that's it. Like, that's all he has to say. It's unbelievable. How Makes tough. you want to block for him. Oh, oh dude. It's uh, – you can see, like, that's one thing being around him. You realize how magnetic he is. Yeah. Like, there's so many people – uh, his circle is so big. There's so many yep. people that are every game for him that are his friends and family and everything else. And it's not like a, him trying to get people to the game. It's like all these people just want to be around him. And you can see why, just his attitude and how he carries himself. Yeah, he he he's incredible. I'm so happy for him and so many guys. I mean, like I just mentioned Eric Weddle. You, you had a magical weekend. Aaron Donald has a ring now. I mean, like that just validates what's already damn near a perfect career for him. Uh, it, it really did feel like a little bit of a fucking movie. I mean, just everything that happened for y'all. But before it all, and we kind of touched on this, I can remember watching the Tennessee game and thinking, this team's not a Super Bowl team. Like, this is me being real. Like, yep. what did you think at that point in the season? You know, I thought when we left uh, the Green Bay game, really, after kind of that stretch where it's like you, you lose to Tennessee, yeah. um, you end up losing to Green Bay as well. You know, it's like Stafford was banged up that game. You don't have to say anything. Yeah, he's but he banged was, up. He's yeah. fighting through stuff. And I thought we really kind of, um, kind of somewhat circled the wagons and said, "All right, look, how, how like we got enough talent, we got enough ability. There, there's no reason why we can't be a Super Bowl football team, other than like how do we find the best way 
for us to just kind of calm down and just play complimentary football. And, and that's literally was our only focus. Like when we went to the Jacksonville game, which is kind of the start of the streak, it was like, hey, how do we play complimentary football? Like how does the offense just make sure the defense is in a good spot and the defense makes sure we're in a good spot and teams find a way to just keep contributing and making some splash plays for us. Yeah. And let's, let's kind of, you know, if you go look at the Jacksonville tape, it's like we start playing some big linemen. We start playing some 13 and some 12, which we're always just an 11 team. And it's like just kind of hitting people in the face a little bit saying, yeah. all right, let's just start smashing people a little bit, being physical and just trying to like learn, like kind of get back to the basics of ball. Like, you know what, take care of the football and offense play good defense and have really good sound special teams. And then let's let our talent do the, do all the rest for us. All the extra can come from that. And, and I thought that really settled us in. And then we kind of just built from there. And yeah. it's like, we almost like started over yeah. and said, all right, let's start building from this moment. Yeah. And you had to figure out what to do with Odell and Robert Woods was banged up. I felt like Sean did a lot of really good adjusting. I think oh, he, yeah. he's done a lot of really good adjusting over the last three, four years. When you look at it, you know, Todd Gurley not being a part of that offense, you know, some of the old linemen that left, like you guys have had to adjust a lot of things and including in this year, hitting the curveball a few times. So I think the Sean McVay factor is huge. And um, for a guy that was on the cusp of, you know, losing another painful game to Kyle Shanahan, I know that matters to him, to now he's a world champion. What a swing of a couple of weeks. Talk about like, what he meant to you guys down the stretch. Like what's his mindset at halftime? I can remember I had two head coaches in the Super Bowl, very different approaches, very different like mindsets. What has Sean McVay's mindset been and was it any different for the second time? Yeah, I thought it was great. I mean, I really thought the last really month, uh, month and a half of the season, just all throughout the playoffs, he had a tremendous attitude and mindset. Like he just kind of knew um, he had a really good football team and all he had to do was just be himself and just lead like he always does. And, and things were going to work themselves out. It's just almost like he had that constant resolve and attitude about it. And, and fo I can remember the NFC championship at halftime. It's literally like, Hey, you're down three, you know, they're kind of being, you know, same kind of games kind of going the same way it's been going. What are you going to do to change it? Yeah. And it's like in the NFC championship, he literally just walked in there and he's like, Hey guys, listen, like I refuse to believe we're not winning this football game. Like, all, right. all I know is you guys are about to go out there and you're gonna find a way to win this game. I refuse to believe any other result. And that's all you need to understand. And we just walked out. It was like almost this complete resolve that one way or another, who cares whether it's pretty, like, I feel like at times you can get caught up into like, what does it look like? Like, yeah. hey man, you know, I want the ball to look a certain way. And it's like, dude, when you start playing great football teams, yeah. it's by any means necessary. Yeah. Like find a way to win. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what the great ones do. And, uh, you don't, you know, I'm a golfer. I always say they only, they only look at the scorecard, right? right. And you can get a hole in one. If you shank it off the wall, you ain't got to tell anybody that as long mm -hmm. as it went in. Mm -hmm. Hey, no, exactly. Yeah. And to me, that's what great football is about. When you play great teams, you find a way to win whatever mm -hmm. that takes. And so I think that was kind of the attitude and mantra that we kind of developed going into Jacksonville is we're going to be a physical football team and we're going to win by whatever means necessary. And that kind of carried us on throughout, and we almost grew from it. I thought the San Fran game at the end of the season was something we actually became a better football team having gone through that game. 